site-specific applications using various solar. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. I'll probably be lecturing on behalf of Metasys next year, this coming year, but I will be donating the uh, fees over to the, the academy, so I'm not taking any consulting fees. This is a lady on the left who actually had her lines and lips filled by another doctor about a week before this photo was taken, and she was coming up for reunion. So I did my standard volume fill using cannulas, and I filled one cc of Restylane under each eye, and I used a little bit of that to actually balance her lips. Uh, Randy uh, Waldman gave a good talk yesterday, and what I, what I did was I just sort of gave her that little cleft in the bottom lip. It just makes it look a little less tubular looking. And then I did a half a cc of perlane into each anterior cheek and then I did a half a cc of perlane in, into each anterior chin pre-jowl. So it's four syringes, two perlanes, two restylanes, all cannula injected uh, to place that in there. It's much smoother, the bruising goes down a lot less, there's much less chance of having arterial issues with it because you're not hitting anything. And I think it's especially very safe around the periorbital region. So the other thing is I always say, a lot of times when you see these before and afters you, at the meetings, you're always seeing these close up of the nasolabial fold or a little ditzel here. I always say, look at the whole face because that's how you judge each other. So women are very focused on the little lines, this and that. I try to bring them out of that and let them see their whole face because that's how people react to each other, it's the whole face. So I say, get yourself away from that close up mirror. And that's what I do with volume now. I'm really looking at volume restoration, not focusing on the little lines. But really creating, this is all fat grafting by the way, so th these are just to show you how I basically preview my fat with my fillers. Because people say, well, you know, you get them in your practice, you do a great nasolabial fold, they're going to have their facelift done. Well, how does a nasolabial fold relate to a, a facelift? I, I think the volume fills give them an incredibly good preview of what fat can do. And to me, that's a, a very nice extrapolation. So let's go back to fillers here. These are a couple more examples using the uh, one cc of Restylane under each eye. And actually for her, she's got a heavier jawline or heavier jowl. So almost everything went into the pre-jowl. Very little went into the anterior chin. If you do a very skeletal person, I put more perlane into the anterior face of the chin to cover that bone. Another lady where perhaps when you look at her on the left, you're tempted to look at her labial mandibular folds, you're tempted to look at her nasolabial folds, and look at that as the problem of correction, but once again, I didn't touch that. I filled her under eyes, I filled her cheeks, and I filled her chin. Same uh, re recipe I gave you earlier, and you're welcome to come and ask me afterwards. This is uh, Restylane using cannulas. You know, I don't think you need cannulas in the hands, but I, I, did, I did a cannula to, to fill Let's talk a little about radius. Uh, I don't use as much radius. I'll tell you about how I use these products toward the end. I think it's a great product though. It's, it's December 2006 FDA approved for nasolabial folds and HIV related lipoatrophy. I think you know most of these products. I don't need to you know, go through all of that, but it is something that is biosynthetic and biocompatible and biodegradable. There's a tissue infiltration period that occurs over three months so that as that comes in, you're not gonna really feel the product. People say, I don't feel the product anymore after three or four months. And that's, that is unique to, to radius. You usually still feel that perlane for the time of the duration of the product, but there's limited palpability over time. It's something important to tell your patients because they're gonna come and tell you, hey, hey, the product is gone. You take their photo, you go, no, it's not. It's still there, I can see it. Um, it, it does last quite a long time. I, I went, I, maybe five years, I was talking to Steve, the. Uh, I think President or some other company was saying that's not quite right, it's not this long. I think it lasts a long time, you know. I think it lasts a long time in the body. But it does analcify and calcify if you put it away from bone. It's ba basically made of a gel carrier, and as I said, at three months, you could lose a little bit of the effect at that point because as the tissue ingrowth is occurring, you may not get a one to one exchange of loss of gel carrier and in, in infiltration of, of tissue. At that point, you may need a little touch up. It is prepackaged in 0.3 and 1.3 cc syringes. There are no need for reconstitution. These are things you guys know about. I don't want to go through all that. This is the, another, again, the dirty lie. I truly, truly, truly believe this needs to be placed in the subcutaneous plane, especially now that we're moving more toward volume. It makes no sense to try to hug that deep dermis. If you get a problem with this, you're in deep doo-doo land. So I will tell you, stay subcutaneous. If you're getting great results intradermal, fine. I'm not here to ask you to change. But if you're just starting with this product, I see no reason to go intradermal at all, period. And remember this other thing, I had some problems a few years ago when I started, was as, you, as your needle comes out, just make sure you stop before you hit the dermis because you're gonna inject intradermal. 
always, it's a very moldable product. It's very moldable. And remember when you massage that product where you want it, massage into the area you want it. Don't massage it out of the area. I mean, squeeze it in like this instead of doing that kind of action. It really will get it where you want it to be. I, where do I do it? I, I, if someone, I use it for deep volume fills in the cheek and jawline. I use it for deep folds and lines and I use it for hands. And I don't like it in the periorbital region. Uh, I think as uh, I hate to, you know, Val Lambros mentioned, is, you know, you gotta be nuts using this around the eyes. I, I wanna be careful with that. If you're getting great results, fantastic, go for it. I think there's just, there's a risk profile around the eyes that it's higher. And if, again, if you're a novice injector, perhaps don't go there. This is just the nasolabial fold for a relatively deeper fold. I think this is much better with radius. This is uh, Juvederm around the eyes when I was doing more of that and radius into the cheeks. That's one syringe of radius into the cheeks, half split halfway. This is about four syringes of radius uh, being used for HIV lipoatrophy. This is uh, two syringes of radius into, e uh, no, I'm sorry, 1.5 syringes of radius into each hand. This is done with a needle injection and it's using that lidocaine swish you heard about to, to allow it to smooth better. Polyol lactic acid I really don't use very much anymore. It's FDA approved for HIV lipoatrophy. I think a lot of these things you already know about, I'm gonna go through the details, but to use a great dilution of it, you know, I use about 5.5 D's with the lidocaine. That makes it the night before. And then I, and the key, inject it subcutaneous. That's the key here. And just, and you gotta wait. And this is the thing, part of the reason I don't really use it much anymore now is that you have to, patients need a lot of this. And you need to wait a long time before you see a result. And a lot of patients want the result yesterday. And that's part of the reason I don't use the product much anymore. I'm running out of time here. So the, you know, the benefits of this, I really believe, is in the mid-face, in the, in the chin area. I, I, you know, obviously not in the nose and the lips. Periorbally, you can do it. Again, I think there are some limited risks with it, and I would encourage you probably to stick with the mid-face area with Sculptra. But if you're good with periorbal in the depot fashion, you're doing a good job with that, fantastic. I just would tell you, probably if you would stay away from it. Um, this is just an example of Sculptra. So the Overt I use everywhere. I think it's a fantastic product. Um, it's really good for almost everything in my opinion. It's reversible. The calcium hydroxyl appetite, fantastic product for deep volume, deep lines, uh, uh, hands. I don't do it for periorbital regions. Uh, and I, the problem I don't, the reason I don't use as much is because I do a lot of fat transfers. I can't convert someone from calcium hydroxyl appetite. In other words, I can't dissolve the product and move them over to fat. I like to guess it, as I said, part of the facial use, and it's, there's some contraindications, but it takes a long time for the patient to see the result based on the cost. So I'm out of time here. I appreciate your attention, and uh, that's the dirty secret, which is stay in the subcutaneous plane. That's a book on fat transfer, and that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you.